Well, a very, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. And uh, welcome to the 2020 21 end of season Player of the Year Awards. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction you must stay at home.
Well, we're behind the scenes here at uh, Shrewsbury Town. Kit room on my right, a coach's room on the left. That's where they sit and relax before and after the game. But let me just tell you, tonight up for grabs will be the goal of the season, the Young Player of the Year Award, the Supporters Parliament Family Award, Chris Smith's Special Recognition Award, the Community Champion Award, and the very significant and much coveted Players Player Award, where your teammates make their choice of favourite player. Top goal scorer, and as always, your choice of Player of the Season. We've just walked along the corridor a little way and we've arrived in the, the home dressing room and I'm delighted to have been joined uh, by Radio Shropshire's Stuart Dunn and uh, welcome Stuart and a very good evening to you. Thank you Ryan, lovely to be here. Probably this season when, when you write your memoirs or, your, or the history of Shrewsbury Town I would imagine that uh, looking back in 10 years time this season will be more about all the incidents off the field rather than on the field particularly with our manager you know, going through the, the, the year from hell, I would imagine. It's been an extraordinary season. It has a, a remarkable um, chain of events in, in, in the history of, of Shrewsbury Town Football Club. First of all, I think all connected with the football club have, have done very well in the face of considerable adversity to ensure that Shrewsbury Town Football Club and the supporters have another season of, of League One football uh, to look forward to. If you cast your mind back to the, the season... Um, Shrewsbury Town found themselves in um, a difficult position, shall we say, at the end of November when uh, Steve Cottrell was appointed manager. They found themselves second bottom in the League One table, nine points on the board from 13 matches, and they had work to do. The first game was the FA Cup, uh, the second round. Tricky tie against Oxford City. It took extra time before Dan Aludo scored to, to make it 1-0, and that was enough to, to send Shrewsbury through. And then talk about the impact that Steve Cottrell had, and it was amazing to suddenly see Shrewsbury Town go to Hull and to Lincoln and to Doncaster and come away with 1-0 victories. Um, Steve Cottrell, manager of the month in December, and it was all going so well. Shrewsbury were firmly moving in the right direction. And then the new year dawned, and as you touched on, as you alluded to, um, Shrewsbury Town had um, um, the issues with, with, with COVID, um, Steve Cottrell himself uh, suffering uh, enormously, unimaginable to even begin to, to contemplate what Steve Cottrell has, has gone through over the, over the last uh, four months or so. But he had such terrific players, terrific uh, group of players and the way they responded, led by Aaron Wilbraham and David Longwell to ensure that they kept picking up some really important results and what about Steve Cottrell himself, managing remotely from afar with the, the team talks to the players, regular contact with Aaron Wilbraham and, and David Longwell. It's inspiring when you reflect just what Shrewsbury Town have, have gone through and the fact they've managed to still finish 17th in the, in the division and in, ensure safety with a few weeks to spare. I, I just wonder whether you've been aware of the added pressure on you as uh, uh, Radio Shropshire's commentator on, on our football matches, both home and away, because our fans haven't been able to come to matches, they've relied hugely on, on listening to you on the radio and, and, and also the pictures that I follow now. Was there any added pressure? Did you appreciate just how reliant we were, we were on you and, and what you saw? Well, it's always been a massive privilege to, to be the, the Radio Shropshire commentator of uh, on Shrewsbury Town's matches and, and this season with supporters sadly not being here at the Meadow and at away grounds to, to watch their belov beloved club. Uh, it has been such a, a strange time, hasn't it? First and foremost, I've missed supporters in, in stadiums so much, uh, even doing the commentary. Having It's all about responding to supporters, the atmosphere, the, the, the near misses, the goals. I think back to some of the special goals Shrewsbury Town have scored this season and how much better they would have been with a few thousand Shrewsbury Town supporters here jumping around and, and rowing them on. So, as always, we've done the job to the, the best of our ability on, on Radio Shropshire for the listeners, and it's been a, a, a new area, hasn't it? The, the fact that people can, can watch the pictures and, on iFollow and, and listen to our commentary as well, so it's been something new and um, something that... Uh, 
the supporters have had to uh, become accustomed to. Hopefully not for too much longer, though, and hopefully they'll, they'll be back at the meadow as soon as it's deemed safe to be so. And, and I sense, uh, you know, just being in Shrewsbury and talking to supporters, I just sense that there is an optimism about the future of the football club under Steve Cottrell, now that we're pretty confident that he's fit and well. He was certainly in good voice for those last two homes uh, games of the season. I think he was just behind you, so you, you caught more of it th th than I did. But even I, 200 yards away, could pretty well hear what he was saying. Yeah, it was great, uh, first of all, to see that the manager was well enough to be at the, the last three matches of the season, Oxford and Ipswich here and uh, crew away uh, on the final day. And you're right, yeah, I pick up on that optimism as well. Uh, they've seen the impact that Steve Cottrell's had at, at Shrewsbury Town, the, the quality of the signings they've made in the January transfer window. And it's always a time for optimism, isn't it? When you get to the end of one season and you look ahead to the next one, and it's going to be an interesting season, isn't it, in League One? Some big clubs in there with uh, the likes of Portsmouth, Ipswich and Charlton still, still in the division, Wigan, recent FA Cup winners, Sheffield Wednesday coming down, Bolton Wanderers coming up. So it uh, promises to be an intriguing season ahead, and Shrewsbury Town, I'm sure, looking forward with, uh, with lots of optimism the supporters of Shrewsbury Town can have a, a good time of it next season. Wonderful. Well, for the moment, Stuart, thank you very much. Let me just uh, remind everybody at the very end of this evening... We will be doing uh, the draw. Stuart and I will, will share in doing the draw and announcing the names of the winners because we have some really quite remarkable prizes. Our first award of the evening is the goal of the season. And uh, I know the media team have been delighted in the amount of interest that you have shown and you have voted in your absolute hundreds. Let's look at your top three choices. In third position, Harry Chapman versus AFC Wimbledon. A game of very, very few chances so far. Corner taken short to Ogbetto. Now Chapman on the edge of the area. Chapman, great shot. Oh, wonderful. Harry Chapman, again, terrific from the outside of the penalty area. Just uh, lifts it exquisitely into the far corner of the net. No chance for Walker. In second place, Harry Chapman versus Swindon Town. Two sides seemingly reluctant to push it too hard. Nice touchdown by Main, and that is some finish from Harry Chapman. A sparkling goal, and Shrewsbury leads. Well, just look at this. Sweetly struck by Harry Chapman to give the away side the lead. And your winner, your choice of the goal of the season, scored by Brad Walker versus Cambridge United. Norburn looking to get forward in support. Udo does well to hold after the ball. Hold the ball up there. Shooting chance, good hit. Oh, what a goal! Brad Walker, unstoppable! From what, 30 yards at least? Beauty! into the top corner, and that's surely the goal that will send Tan through to the second round of the FA Cup. Well, congratulations, Brad Walker, on scoring that goal, and not a bad goal either, Stuart. What a goal. I can well remember being sat at the, uh, the Abbey Stadium, FA Cup first round, Shrewsbury leading by uh, a goal to nil, and Tan broke, great hold to play from Daniel Udo, and we've seen on occasions in his Shrewsbury career that Brad Walker can hit a ball so cleanly, so powerfully, and that, that is exactly what he did that day. He really got hold of that one. It flew into the top corner, a beautiful uh, FA Cup strike, 2-0 to Shrewsbury Town, and ensured that they were withdrew to the next round of the competition. Uh, had to be something special when you consider the quality of some of those other goals, in particular the Harry Chapman goals. He almost had his own private goal of the season competition going on, didn't he? And there were others as well. Lots of other very good goals over the season. But Brad Walker, most certainly a worthy goal of the season, as voted for by the supporters. Indeed, uh, Stuart. And let's just go across and see what Brad Walker had to say about scoring that goal. Brad, you've won goal of the season for your strike against Cambridge in the FA Cup. Talk me through that goal, first of all. No, I mean... At the time, Cambridge were doing really well and we were wanting a lot. And coming towards the end of the game, it was just a bit of a counter-attack as we were a bit capped in. And 
I've just got it and stepped in. I thought I might as well hit it and luckily for me it went right in the top corner. I think it's fair to say there's been some absolute worldies today from other members of the squad. Were you confident you were getting this award? Well, I looked through the videos and um, there were some very good goals, but I, I always thought I should win this, so luckily I did. You seem to have a, a really good knack of scoring long range goals, whether that's free kick or from open play. Is that something you practised as, as a kid or is that something that just came natural? I think more natural than anything. Obviously, do a lot of work in training with just like shooting drills and stepping in to shoot and stuff, but from that far out, really, it's just as long as you get a good connection, you're going to have half a chance. Well, we've made our way up to the Sovereign Suite and uh, right above me you can see the Coracle and Fred Davis. Uh, and to my left you can see, um, well, this is before uh, your time, Stuart, most definitely. Just a and little. I want to assure you it's also long before <laughs> my time as well. But here's the Players' Tunnel at the old Gay Meadow. And when I first started going down to the uh, Gay Meadow, it was still very similar to this. Nothing much had changed at that particular point. We come now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the Young Player of the Year Award. That's a player under the age of 21. And with uh, a quite incredible 92% plus of the votes, I can announce the winner is Nathaniel Ogbetter. <laughs> And Stuart, I suppose, very little surprise that uh, Nathaniel has clinched this particular prize. Worthy winner, terrific signing, love watching him play. Can't wait for the supporters to be inside the stadiums watching him play. They will love him. He's a crowd favourite already, isn't he? Uh, came in in January, made his debut, Football League debut against Peterborough, who went on to get promotion. He played so well that day, Nathaniel Ogg better and has continued to hit those same high standards. 25 consecutive appearances from his debut till the end of the season. A couple of very good goals as well, Plymouth Argyle and, and Portsmouth. Portsmouth first and then Plymouth. Loved the celebration uh, after the Plymouth goal as well. And uh, he's such an exciting talent. Um, you can see he's been uh, educated football-wise at a, at a very good club in Manchester Absolutely. City. He's been capped by England at... at uh, uh, youth international levels as well, and a terrific signing mm. for Shrewsbury Town. Look forward to watching him play for the club moving and, forward. Uh, I think come August, when there's a crowd here in the, uh, the, the stadium, he will thrive. Very much so, very much so, and the, the fans will, will love him because he's so exciting, isn't he when, he, when he goes forward with the ball and there's always that sense of anticipation that something's about to happen. can take a free kick as well. We think back to that whole city free kick when it hit the bar and then... Seem to go in off the goalkeeper. So he's got so many good attributes going for him and difficult to, uh, to remember sometimes that this is such a young footballer who's having his first run of, of consecutive matches in the Football League. Uh, Marvellous signing and uh, we look forward to 
to seeing him continue to, to entertain Shrewsbury Town supporters. Well, very many congratulations to our new young player of the year, Nathaniel Ogbetter. Uh, a huge prospect for the future. And we look forward very much to seeing what he can do next season in front of a crowd. Let's have a look to see what uh, Nathaniel had to say when he was interviewed earlier. Nat, you've been voted the Young Player of the Year. That's a nice accolade for you in your first senior season in football. Yeah, so happy. Man. It's been a real good season for me. Coming into men's football, it was a bit of a shock to the system. But just the way the fans received me has just been amazing. I felt so comfortable here. I'm so grateful to God and to the manager for the players for accepting me and giving me the opportunity to play so many games. And I'm really happy that I've had the start that I did. Obviously, it's got tougher as I've got on, and I'm starting to see how tough men's football is. But I'm so happy to have started here, and I've really enjoyed every moment. I think all the fans would agree. It's it's amazing to see your performance level at such a young age. Why do you think you've done so well? Um, I definitely believe my faith is key to why I've done so well. I have such a strong faith in God and that gives me real confidence when I get onto the pitch. Also during the lockdown period, like it obviously it was a tough time, but for me it was a real positive time because it gave me a lot of time to work on areas of my game that I don't usually get the opportunity to work on. So I feel coming here because I was able to get so much practice, it gave me the confidence to go out onto the pitch and try some of the things that I do and obviously coming from City, there's not as much freedom we play like with a lot of structure but coming here it was freedom and I feel like that lockdown period which gave me time to express myself really helped and I feel like I'm still so far from where I can be in terms of expressing myself and going forward but I really think that this has been a great stepping stone to really help me believe in my ability to, to show what I can do as a, as a professional footballer. Next season, potentially having the fans back in the stadium. Are we going to see some uh, more long range goals and backflips for them? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. But the hard work starts in pre season. I have to work hard. There's no guarantee that I'm going to play. Obviously, I've been very fortunate with only one um, being the only like left wing back at the moment. So I played almost every game. But football's not. There's nothing guaranteed in football. So I have to keep working hard, keep focusing, keep trying to improve my game because although it's good what I've done this in the past and what, what's important is what's, what lies ahead. So I'm happy with how I've done, but I hope I can take my game to another level to, to help impress the fans and help the team get as far up and hopefully get promotion next season. Yeah, looking forward to next season. Something you haven't experienced before is a full Montgomery Waters Meadow. How excited are you to see those stands back and, and hearing the fans singing your name? Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I can't lie, I've played against Shrewsbury twice. I played them twice in the Checker Trade Trophy and just to see like how they get behind the team is just amazing. Like, fortunately, we won the second game, but that was really good. But to see the fans, they're really they're with the team 100%, and you have to really stay focused as an opposition player because the fans really help. So I really can't wait to hopefully play from the fans see and show up. Well, our next award is the Supporters Parliament Shrews Family Award. And the winner is Lawrence Ellaby. Lawrence is our Head of Security at the Montgomery Waters Meadow. And he's this year's recipient because of his exceptional leadership and management in getting the pilot games on with such limited resources and at such short notice much earlier in the season. Now, these pilot games were a, a huge success, put again our football club right in the spotlight with the relevant authorities who were really impressed with the work that had been carried out here at the stadium. Despite stadiums being empty for much of the season, Lawrence has had to ensure that COVID-19 protocols were followed to provide a safe environment for our own players and staff and also that of all of our visitors to the Montgomery Waters Meadow on a match day. So very many congratulations to security man Lawrence Ellaby. So Lawrence, you're the latest recipient of the Sports Parliament Shrews Family Award. Uh, a nice accolade for yourself. 
Absolutely, yeah. Can't believe it. Really, uh, really chuffed. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much to everybody. It's, it's really, uh, really good. Thank you. Talk me through this year. It's been crazy. <laughs> I think everyone's felt the same. A lot of things have happened, and tell me about some of the challenges that you've had to face. Uh, I think well, we go back to, to July really uh, of last year where we, we got, came back thinking that we weren't going to have any fans in the ground. That was the initial plan was, was writing policies for not having any fans in the ground. And then fairly quickly that changed as you remember to having the, the pilot game, the Northampton game of, of a thousand supporters, which we dealt with in about three days. But for, I'd already started to write some of the protocols for it, but the physical aspects of it, you know, literally we, we did it in 48, 72 hours. So that obviously was a challenge. Um, but you know it went really well, uh, the supporters were fantastic, um, the feedback as you know we had from the authorities and the supporters themselves was great which was, which was really good so, so it was really pleasing to get just a thousand people in at, at that time and obviously we were, we were looking forward to, to bigger and better things. With that Northampton game it was kind of one of the first clubs to have fans back in. For yourself, I know a lot of work went into it. How rewarding was that for you seeing the fans back in the ground? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, for everybody at the club because you know we did put a lot of work into it, uh, a lot of preparation, paperwork, um, going through the safety advisory group, going through the local authority, making sure we met all the criteria from the EFL. So there's a lot went into it, and then I said the physical aspects of setting the stadium up as well was, was a challenge in itself. So to get a thousand people in on that day was just you know was just so re so rewarding for everybody. Really, it was it was really good. Being in charge of a stadium and all the safety, that's a lot of weight to have on your shoulders. What's it like dealing with that responsibility? Uh, it, it has its difficult moments, but you know, overall, it's something I enjoy doing. Um, we love to see the fans in. We just want them to come and enjoy the games and, and in a safe manner and go home having enjoyed the game and you know, everybody goes home safely. That, ultimately, that's, that, that's the aim. You know, this year's been, been trying for, for different reasons, obviously, but you know, that's always the aim, is that people come enjoy themselves and go home safely. I know one of the highlights will be having those fans back in, but if you could point some of the highlights of your year out, what would it be? Uh, well, the Northampton game really is, was probably the, 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 the first one. The fact that we, you know, we got everything done and, and ready in time. We met all the protocols and everything else. Um, and then obviously moving on from that, when we had the, the, the other games with the, with the 2,000 spectators in again was a, was a, was a highlight because there weren't many clubs at the time, you recall, that even, could even do that. Because uh, I think we were in Tier 2 at the time, if I remember rightly. So just to be, you know, part of that sort of few clubs was really rewarding, and knowing that we could make it work, and I think, you know, the feedback that we got, as I said, from everybody was so good that that, you know, that itself just made it all worthwhile. Next season's a bit of an unknown still, but hopefully the fans are back in. How excited are you to get working on those plans? Oh, it'll be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'll be planning for all scenarios really, because uh, as you say, we don't know at the moment, and we won't know probably until at least the 21st of June. But it's fingers crossed, everything crossed for, for early August, if not July for a pre-season friendly, that we can get fans, hopefully as many as we can get in. Um, we don't know yet, but yeah, that's that's what we're planning for. So we'll, we'll be ready to, to get everybody back in as soon as possible. It's clear to see that you're really passionate about your job. How does it feel? What does it mean to you working for Shrewsbury Town? Well, it's, it's fantastic for me because you know, it's my local club, I only live five minutes away, um, so to, to work for the club, represent the club is, is, you know, is just brilliant. I, I enjoy doing it, um, hopefully you know, the fans see the, what we're trying to achieve through the supporters parliament and all the supporters groups that, that, that we go to and, and discuss and you know, we're trying to keep a clear dialogue, you know, Brian very keen to, to, to talk to supporters as much as we can and I'm, you know, I'm all behind that all the way. So. It, it is rewarding because you know we know the fans enjoy themselves and as I said, we're just looking forward to getting them back in, in in August. And being local, does that mean you get a lot of questions from friends and family back home that you, you can't answer just yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, we're all tied to the government road map at the moment and you know, waiting and see how the trials go, how the crowds in the playoffs go and, and then the Euros. So unfortunately we haven't got any answers at the moment, but you know, we, as I say, we, we are working towards the, the ultimate aim is, is to have all our fans back in for the first game. Thank you very much, congratulations. Thank you, thanks very much indeed, thanks. Good evening.
The coronavirus is the biggest threat this football club has faced for decades. Our football club is not alone. All over the world we've seen the devastating impact of this disease. Tonight I want to update you on the latest steps that we are taking towards normality and what you can do to help. From this evening, I must give the Salopian family a very simple message. You must come back home. The Montgomery Waters Meadow is not the same without you. We need the Blue Amber Army and we need you now. You've supported our football club fantastically from afar, donating money to support, cheering our lads on from our homes on iFollow, and being great support on social media and more. And for that, I applaud you all. But now the time is almost upon us to reopen the turnstiles, dust down our seats, bang the drums, and mount our flags, because our Blue Amber Army will be back stronger than ever to cheer the boys on to success. Therefore, I urge you all to come home, sing loud, and wear the badge with pride. Thank you. Well, I uh, made my way out onto the uh, terrace just outside the Sovereign Suite. Pictures to my left and you may be aware of the sounds of young people who are taking part in one of the very, very many Shrewsbury Town initiatives. The pitch is now available, it's post-season uh, and at the moment there are several games going on and you can imagine the delight of those young people playing on the pitch where they see their heroes playing during normal times of course uh, on uh, the Shrewsbury Town pitch. And now I'm uh, delighted to be handing you over to Jamie Edwards, who will tell you a little bit more about the work of the community over the past very challenging 12 months. And Jamie will also announce the winners of the Champion Award. Jamie, it's been a year like no other. Try and summarise it for me. Um, well, we've really enjoyed it. I think for, from our point of view, it's been um, a really good thing for Shrewsbury Town in the community which is a weird thing to say but it's really highlighted the work that we do the importance of the football club as a community football club and making sure that we engage with all different um, society basically and, and make sure we support wherever we can whether that's player appearances whether that's elderly engagement with a health and well-being program making sure that those that are isolated are supported whether it's helping schools with the education gap created and making sure that lessons were provided making sure that, that children and anxiety levels and mental health um, are still engaged and, we, and we've managed to do all of that 
as well as stand here and hopefully in a week's time be open a brand new 3G pitch which will again serve the wider community not just just our own projects. It seems like despite all the lockdowns and restrictions work has only gone up and everything's got into overdrive to give people the support they need. Yeah, I and mean, like the funding support that we've had um, is, has been phenomenal. The support that we've had from fans and supporters and, and the feedback that we've had for the, the work we've done has really motivated our staff to do more. Um, and I think now is a, it, it was a time for us to be brave and, and show what we can do. And, and some of it we didn't have the skill set for, but we still managed with a bit of passion and a bit of proactiveness to really engage every member or every participant that we have on our programmes. And like I said, I think that word of being brave going forward now with some of the new projects that, we, you, that the fans will see coming out in the next 12 months will be a real eye-opener for, for what a football club, what a true community football club can do within its own community. It's been a really bleak time for everyone really so give me a, more of a positive note, tell me about the good things your team have done. So like I said, health and wellbeing, we've been working with those that are isolated, so we've been at the garden gate talking to them if they're, if they're in their lockdown and isolated away from their families. We've taken food parcels, we've taken isolation packs out to, to people, we've, we've supported schools with player appearances to engage those that are disengaged, who weren't actually coming in on the, the Zoom calls and the Zoom teaching, so we've really, we've really supported the schools that are working with us. Even today we've got primary school children playing on the pitch, which we never thought thought we would have um, definitely in January when the, the third lockdown came so we, we just try to carry on and do everything we can do but ramp up that support wherever it's needed and, and adapt to, to the current situation and, and like I said before we've, we've actually really enjoyed it and I'm really proud of the staff members that are involved in, in making this happen and and I'm really proud that we've we've grown, we've grown our workforce, we've we've grown our participants, we've we've grown our facilities here. So it's it's just been for us, and I hate to say it because there has been some sad times, it's just been a really fantastic and positive year for us. In an exceptional year, Steve Burnside has won the Community Champion Award. Tell me about his work. Steve's our facilities and events manager, so when your facilities are shut, you'd be surprised that somebody like that would be put up for the award, but his adaptability, um, he was a sort of lone rider here, he was the only one with the facilities shut, he was in on a daily basis, he was a point of contact for everybody, um, he was vital in our isolation packs being sent out at the start of Covid, he was vital in making sure that communications between all of the staff member members were kept um, and he was vital in making sure that the facilities reopened as quickly as they did, that they're, they're a vital in income for the charity um, and to make sure that they opened up on the day that, that Boris allowed us to open up was really vital and it was hard work to make sure it was safe and compliant and, and run to good quality. Kate Lindley has won the Community Champion Award uh, this year, tell me a bit about her work. Well, Kate's our health and wellbeing officer and um, obviously health and wellbeing at the time of Covid is, is so so important. It would have been easy for somebody in her position to really crumble and under quite a lot of pressure and, and changing. We do loads of work with, with elderly and, and keeping people active um, and obviously those were the ones that suffered the most in terms of lockdown and isolation so her character and her charisma I, sw I suppose and, and her commitment to make sure that we stayed in contact um, there's, there's over two and a half thousand people being called in terms of, of phones and I, I would dread to think how many of those phone calls Kate has done on a weekly basis, um, having a chat about the weekly shop, making sure the weekly shop is there, making sure they're doing their exercises, making sure they've got support networks um, to season ticket holders and, and non-season ticket holders. So again, her job was, was really, really difficult. She adapted our kit cancer programme, so those suffering and, and living with cancer and rehabilitating from cancer were having online Zoom sessions to make sure that they carried on their, their exercises as well. So um, I would say that the work that she's done has been life-changing, life-saving, uh, which is, is quite a big statement, but, but I don't think we should really undermine the work that she has done and also the other, other people in the health and wellbeing team from Front Shrewsbury Town in the community have just been phenomenal, like, like all the staff, in, in being able to adapt to, like I said, a really weird situation and continue to the support and grow the support. We had, I think, 30 uh, people that would come on a Thursday before COVID. We've now got over 120 signed up to, to that and some are walking around the, the pitch here today with them. So it's integrating them, it's getting over that anxiety of coming back and, and just Kate's passion 
is infectious and I think all of the participants and all the staff really do respond to what she does. On a weekly basis myself and Brian at the club are getting an email saying thank you for the phone calls, they, they meant so much and, and a phone call is nothing isn't it to a football club really and, and to be able to, to make a difference and, and help people at this time is, is just fantastic for us. Jamie, Dan Udo, one of the nicest men in football, he's won the PFA Community Champion Award. Tell me a bit about his contribution this year. Yeah, I don't think it was just his. I think all the players have been fantastic this year. It's, it's been difficult for everyone, um, but for us as a football club to still have access to all the players, um, for them to come onto their Zoom accounts, uh, open up their own homes. I think Curtis Main was in his car for one of them with a disability group as well. So they've all been fantastic. But um, Danado is, is somebody that sort of sets the room alight when he, when he walks in, he, he talks to everybody, he smiles, he gets involved. I remember back in the summer that he was using cushions and toys and all sorts in his own, in his own front room as he took part in sessions. So he just, he just embraces everything we do. So we, we're, we're really lucky to have been able to, to have the access to the players in such a, a weird, weird season um, and for them to support all the work that we do. Yeah, one thing to mention, they're always accessible and willing to help out and do things. Yeah, I think we, we pride ourselves on being a community club here. That's that's part of it. We, we know we've got a duty to our own community and any player that signs with the club um, really does embrace what we do. So it's fantastic support right from Davis club captain all the way through to all of the players that, that give up their own time. Our next award is the Chris Smith Recognition Award. And I'm delighted to announce the winner. Sorry, uh, Ryan. Oh, sorry. To interrupt. Uh, change of plan. Put away your script for the time being because you've got um, someone on your piece of paper that isn't the winner of this particular award because uh, I can tell you that the winner of the Chris Smith Special Recognition Award is... Drum roll, please. Ryan Jervis. Well, I'm... Congratulations. Completely dumbfounded. Thank you very much indeed. You take that. There we are. Well, there you go. It's roll reversal. If you cast your mind back to the end of uh, the curtailed last season, it was your good self surprising me uh, for the, with this special award. And tonight, it's all about you, Ryan. You are the, the winner for your wonderful service to the football club for so many years. I started going to games at the, the old Gay Meadow in the early 1980s and I can well remember hearing your voice as I was filtering out from the riverside uh, along the Wakeman end with my dad so you've been there since at least an early early 1980s how long has it been since you've been the uh, the man on the mic the the PA announcer for Shrewsbury Town Games now well thank you Stuart for making me feel so old <laughs> uh, 1978 was my my first and that, that was the season of course the end of that season we got promotion to what is today called the championship. Uh, and I have to say, I used to have to pinch myself because I wasn't too sure why I was doing that particular role. But I remember turning up on a particular game, it was an hour before the game, uh, and Mark Walton was, was my very good friend who uh, on that occasion was helping me out. Uh, he said to me, what do you want to do? Do you want to do the records or do you want to do the mic? I said, it's up to you, it's your call. Um, he decided on the records, I had the mic, uh, and I have to say, every season I wondered you know, if, if they would ask me to go back again. And here we are, how many 40, years 43 is it? years on. Well, it's, thank you very much, <laughs> Stuart, once <laughs> again. Uh, but every season I'm thinking, will they ask me to continue doing it? Uh, and it's just been a massive, massive privilege. Uh, and I have to say, of all the seasons, this has been probably the most difficult, the most challenging. Whilst you and I agree, it's been a tremendous privilege being allowed to come down here and be at the matches, and you wouldn't have, have, have turned down that opportunity. Without the fans down here, it has meant absolutely, uh, absolutely nothing. But to receive this, I'm a, I was all prepared to wax lyrical lyrical about somebody else then and you stop me in my prime. What do you most enjoy about your role? It's more than being the voice on match days. You're involved in so many other areas 
of Shootsby Town Football Club, aren't you? Well, what is fantastic is the number of people who stop you in the street, and you must find the same thing as well. And I'm sometimes in the shop and I'm asking for something, and somebody will turn around and said, I recognise your voice. And it's just the fact that it's allowed me to, not so much friends, but, but to develop so many acquaintances. Uh, just recently, my wife and I have been helping out as, as volunteers at the, uh, in the vaccinations. And we're meeting so many people will come up and say, oh, it's you. What are you doing here today? Because they recognize me or my voice, but me particularly, uh, from, from the football matches. So I think it's that sort of sense of being part of something uh, and uh, um, hopefully making a contribution, a useful contribution. Uh, but this is a complete and total surprise. And just quickly, putting you completely on the spot, you've seen so many terrific players. Uh, for Shrewsbury Town, when you're in your, I'm trying to remember your commentary, your 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 PA box at Gay Meadow was in the the Wakeman stand, if I remember correctly, and now you're in behind the away end here at the Montgomery Waters Meadow. Which Shrewsbury Town players over the years have you really enjoyed watching? Well, I think I have to say many, uh, uh, very many players that I've enjoyed watching. I think Alf Wood probably caught my imagination more than anybody else, and what was wonderful is um, uh, Mike Jones and myself, when Alf was recognized as one of our legends, his wife said he wouldn't be well enough because at that stage he was suffering from advanced stage of Alzheimer's. Uh, and so she said he's too unwell to, to come to Shrewsbury to receive his award. So Mike Jones and I went out to his home in Birmingham and spent an afternoon with, with, with Alf. Uh, and although physically he looked exactly the same, I know that mentally he, his memories had, had, had very sadly gone. So the man, the man that Harry Gregg converted from a centre half into a striker, and a fantastic striker, uh, was scoring many, many goals. Uh, he was my first real uh, memory of being part of the Shrewsbury Town family. Well, many congratulations on your award. Terrifically well deserved. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, our winner of the Chris Smith Community Award, Ryan Jervis. Well, thank you very much indeed, Stuart. It's an uncanny likeness if it isn't him. <laughs> I think you're right, though. That's yeah. not his son. <laughs> so, good ball played over to the left hand side. Here's Warley in the penalty area. Warley looking to make something happen. Warley shoots and he scores! Sean Warley! Did well, ran at the defender, got into the penalty area. Knocks the ball forward into uh, midfield towards the experienced Sermon. MK Dodds are giving the ball away. And here's Warley. He's got Keogh in front of him. Warley on the edge of the penalty area. Goes on, Warley scores! What a start for Sean Warley on his 200th appearance for Shrewsbury Town. Five minutes to go. 1 1. Warley goes for goal. Three kick. Oh! And again, just quite content to do a very steady build. And Wardy tries to win the ball off Mark Byrne. Who knows what it? And here's Wardy. This is the chance. Wardy in the penalty area. And Wardy has scored. Sean Wardy for Shrewsbury Town. And Town's front two do terrifically well. Ball played forward by Williams to Clark and now Miller midway inside the Wigan half. Little ball square to Zambarek who plays it into the box towards Warley. Good footwork for Warley and a quality equaliser. Sean Warley. Chapman will take charge of it. Put his right foot from the left hand side. Low one towards the near post. It's flicked into the back of the net at the near post. In towards the near stick. Udo after this one. A couple of Plymouth players with him. And Udo does well to emerge with it. Plays it out to the right hand side. Town have got options here. Shot comes in, takes a deflection, and it's gone in and shoots me in front. And it's Warley. It out. But again, Goss prepared to, to take the shot on and he hit it well enough. And that's a bit risky. Here's Warley chance for a second, and this is a second. Plymouth give the ball away. Nice turn from Goss now, who's quickly closed down. Goss looks after the ball well and finds Warley on the left-hand side. Udo in the middle. Warley does well. Warley shoots. Warley scores. Fabulous goal from Sean Warley. It was well worked by Shrewsbury Town. And then Warley got into the penalty area, cut inside, and finishes beautifully into the top corner of the net. It's goal number nine of the season for Sean Warley. And it's crew two, Shrewsbury one. Uh, 
uh, a season, Stuart, when uh, we would have liked very many more goals, we had some cracking goals scored. Didn't we, just? And uh, the winner of the, the leading goal scorer, Sean Worley. Nine goals uh, in the end. Um, scored on the final day, of course, at, at Crewe. What a good goal it was. And you look back on some of the goals that Sean scored over the season, some important goals. We think of the winning goal at Lincoln City, a fabulous free kick against Accrington Stanley. A goal, a very early goal. It is 200th appearance for Shrewsbury Town at MK Dons uh, back in November. He continues to be... Uh, a, a, a very popular figure with supporters who uh, I know will be uh, delighted to see that Sean Worley will continue into a seventh season at Shrewsbury Town uh, moving forward next season. And Sean Worley is uh, Shrewsbury Town's top goal scorer for this particular season. And one of the most approachable f footballers, I think, I can ever remember at Shrewsbury Town. Always willing to, to come and have a chat and make a comment. And what I've also noticed is that when I'm struggling at half time to find somebody to help me with a golden gamble, Sean is, is always a banker. He's always there willing to say a few, say a few words, make a, a comment, but always willing to help out. Yeah, always an extremely likeable lad, uh, been at Shrewsbury Town a long time now. It um, it's, doesn't happen too often, does it, these days, that, that players stay uh, for, the, for the amount of time that Sean has. He was a Mickey Mellon signing from, from Luton Town and... Here we are at the end of his sixth season at Shrewsbury Town. He continues to perform to uh, a very high standard, very consistent, scores goals, creates goals, and continues to underline the qualities that have made him such a, a firm fan's favourite for so many years. And, and long may it continue. And very many congratulations to Sean Worley. <laughs> Well, we now come to the most, uh, two most prestigious awards of the evening. That's the choice of Players Player of the Year and your choice of Player of the Year. And I can reveal to you that uh, the winner of both awards at the end of the 2020-21 season, winning by an absolute landslide, is none other than Josh Vella. On goal, here's a chance, Fella. Chance for two, one, and he scores. Josh Fella in the penalty area. Good finish. Two, one, shoes free. Played into the box, cleared only as far as the edge of the box. Shooting chance, well hit, oh it's a goal! Really good strike. Town in front, and it was Vela. Vela with a shot from outside the box, and it's whistled into the corner. Into closing down by Vela. Vela goes for the return, he's into the area here. Here's a chance for Vela. Vela to Goss, and Goss scores! And it's 4-1! Whaley and through they go. And Josh Vella makes it two. Just like that. And quick five goals inside 10 minutes for Shrewsbury. Might have just put Rochdale away here. No great surprise, Stuart, that Josh Vella has won both of these awards this year. What a consistent season uh, Josh Vella has had. Um, covers so much uh, ground every game, doesn't he? He's up and down, winning tackles, finding teammates. Terrific team player. Great partnership in midfield as well with uh, Ollie Norburn. Got forward and scored a few goals as well. Took his goal exceptionally well 
in one of the, the final home games of the season against uh, Oxford United and has had a, just a, a very good season. Uh, dependable, consistent, and you're right, no surprise at all that the uh, supporters and his teammates have uh, voted for Josh Feller as uh, the winner, the double winner this season. Uh, and uh, incredibly, incredibly important and prestigious as far as Josh is concerned that his own teammates have, uh, have has chosen him as the outstanding player this year. Yeah, very much so. When you talk to players, uh, it means a lot. Every award they pick up from the supporters uh, and when they get it from their own teammates as well, it's a great recognition, isn't it? Just that, that seal of approval, if you like, from your peers, your contemporaries, that they can see what you do. They appreciate what you do day in, day out on the training ground and, and in matches. And Josh Feller, as, uh, as, we, as we say, has had such a, a consistent uh, season uh, for Shrewsbury Town and look forward to, to seeing plenty more of the same from, uh, from Josh in a, in a blue and amber shirt next season. Josh, you have won Players Player of the Year. How nice is it to be recognised by your teammates? Yeah, it's really nice. Um, i delighted to win the Players Player. Obviously, it shows that teammates thought I've played well this year and done well, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. I think everyone would agree your performances have been extremely consistent over the course of this season. How do you achieve that? Um, yeah, people said it's consistent. Obviously, just won the games really, and obviously playing well creates confidence. And I've just, from since the managers come in, I've just tried to play to the best of my ability. I've done that over a consistent period of time, and obviously carried it on to hopefully carry it on towards it to the last game of the season. I think under the Gaffers coaching, everyone's performances have got better, but how would you look back on the season as a whole? Um, obviously with a soft start, obviously with the losing games. So not, obviously we let them, the old manager down, not, nothing to do with him, it's all our fault because we didn't perform the way we should, but the manager come in, give us a big wake up call and demanded what demanded that we get on the table and we've done that. So we pushed the safety quite come to in the end. So obviously we look to build on next season, hopefully have a really good season and push up the table. And personally, for you, how has it been working under the gaffer, Albie and Davey? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Obviously, I used to play with Albie, so I know what Albie's about. He's a good character. He's been brilliant while the gaffer's not been here. And that's when the gaffer was into that short period of time. He's brilliant because he got the best out of me, he got the best out of everyone. And the result, obviously, the results shown on the pitch that he was playing well. Obviously, like I've said before, if he would have stayed well and fit, I think we would have been well up that table. And it is the players, of course, that voted you the Players' Player of the Year. Just a note on them, how have you enjoyed playing with them? I'm sure Norb's in the middle with you, probably your, your favourite player to play with. Yeah, it's been, obviously it's a really good dressing room, a bunch of great lads. As soon as I joined the club, it was just easy, we got on with everyone straight away. Yeah, obviously Norb's were close, me and Norb and Sean Wall were very close together. But yeah, a really good bunch of lads and I'm delighted that they voted for me for Player of the Year. And it's not just one award for you, it's two, you've won the Fans Player, the big one, the Fans oh. Player of the Year. How nice is that for you? Yeah, that's, that's very nice as well. I'm so pleased that they've seen what I can do. Hopefully I can push on next year when they're hopefully back in the stadiums and hopefully I can do it again next year. Yeah, next season. It's going to be massive, isn't it? Having the guys in the stadium cheering you on, that'll give everyone a boost. Yeah, obviously. Not the same without fans. Obviously, it's been a, obviously a tough year for everyone, but obviously with fans in, obviously the game's just better. They make it, the atmosphere better. So hopefully when they're back in next year, we can have a really good season and push up the table. Why do you think it kind of lifts everyone? It gives everyone a bit of a boost, doesn't it? Having the crowds in, screaming for you, yeah, and cheering you. Yeah, it's just the atmosphere, isn't it? Obviously, if you're getting beat, they'll push you on or they're on your back, so you've got to start performing. If you're winning, score. It's not so when you score a goal, obviously cheer the fans. It's miles better, isn't it? In the stadium when it's empty, you score. It's just like training it. But hopefully, when they're back in, when everything's safe and ready to go, have a really good season next year. And you've mentioned before that you have hit double figures in the season before. Is that an aim for you next season? Um, it was an aim this season, obviously, but obviously I've not done that. But I've been playing a bit deep since the manager came, but obviously the last few games I've pushed up and I can get in their positions over can score. I know I can score goals in this league, so hopefully I can get a few more next season. Well done. Cheers, man. Well, we now come to the exciting moment when I uh, invite Stuart to pull out the winning raffle tickets. And we've got some fantastic prizes. The first one, Stu, uh, will be uh, the winning ticket for the signed Steve Cottrell uh, okay. signed shirt, if you'd like to do that first. Have a look. And the winner of the shirt signed by Steve Cottrell is Joe Evans. Well, congratulations to Joe Evans, and that shirt will be making its way to your home as soon as possible. Second prize, Sean Goss, signed match-worn boots. Uh, 
and they are going to Abby Kinner. Congratulations to Abby Kinner. And the next draw ticket will take away the tickets for these. I don't know whether they're worn or not. They look pretty worn. Uh, and it's Harry Chapman's signed football boots. They are going to Daniel Hoff. Many congratulations to Daniel. We now come to the goalkeeper gloves belonging to Harry Burgoyne. And here they are. And the winner of those gloves will be. The gloves are going to Rowan Wilde. Well done to you, Rowan. I hope they fit OK. And the goalkeeper glove is signed by Matthias Sarkic. A lovely bright yellow. And the winner is Will Denny. Many congratulations to you, Will. And the mitre ball that's been signed by uh, all of the Shrewsbury Town squad 2021. The winner of this one, Dave Baton. Well done to Dave Baton. And finally, just one of three copies of Football Manager 2021 signed by our manager, Steve Cottrell. OK, we have uh, Rob L Lear for, for the first. Well done indeed to Rob. And another one. Lewis Jevons. Well done to Lewis. And the third of the Football Manager magazines uh, will be going to Steve Wright. And well done to Steve Wright. Yeah, Congratulations well to, to all our winners. And thank you very much, Stuart, for doing that. And all those prizes will be making way to your home in the very near future. Well, that pretty well uh, winds up our proceedings this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. In many ways, it's not been the very best of seasons, uh, but it's been an interesting season. But I think what we can look forward to is some interesting times ahead. Lots of big decisions got to be made about current players and future players, and it'll be interesting to see how Steve Cottrell and his management team go about making their selections for what I think we're all hoping and rather expecting will be a good season next year. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful summer, ladies and gentlemen, and let's keep our fingers crossed that we'll all be together in this stadium come August and the start of a brand new season. Good night.